never won. Without the other Berlin, welcome to the LEC. And I hope you're ready for a very special day. A little over two years ago, we started casting together and it is my absolute pleasure to introduce my brother, Samuel Initialize Hapgood to the big stage, welcome. Thank you, buddy. You've paved the way, and it is an incredibly special moment, really, to have this opportunity to cast here in Berlin, live with audience, and with such a phenomenal person to do it with. Oh, see, the crowd will love it as well. Uh, that does, however, mean, though, that perhaps enough sentimentality for now. Because we've just got for to now. Talk, uh, just for now. We'll probably bring some more back. We know what we like. Um, but we have got to start talking about our first match of the day, namely BDS versus Astralis. And Goldborg set us up perfectly to start talking about where these teams are at and what they're trying to do in this summer split. Yeah, and obviously we focused a lot on Astralis uh, with that big speech about Kabe. He's obviously not the only experienced member on this team. We talked a lot about the return of Vizichachi. Zosi, coming back to this team, it was a bit of a splice reunion for those awesome rookies in tow as well. And on the other oh. side, BDS. You know what? We have to get into that game and see how it goes. Tell you what, oh brother of mine, that music hits so different in person to uh, anything else as we head on in to talking about picks and bands here, looking at these beautiful pictures of all the players in uh, this particular game. Hmm. So, of course, uh, for this game, players are going to be playing from home. Of course, a couple of the games were hit Indeed. this week through illness. Uh, Sorrells are actually playing backstage, so they yeah. might be coming around for a wave a little bit later, uh, but they're yes, uh, not going to be in the studio. It doesn't matter though, they're still going to have their hearts and souls left on the rift as we do get into those picks and bands, hopefully sooner rather than later. But until that, we can have a look around this beautiful studio uh, and see everything ready to go onto the light show. And both these teams, as we are into this picks and bands, in quite different positions, really, uh, in the trajectory of this bit. BDS not really had the entry to the league in general they would have liked. Astralis, it's been a, a mixed bag, but definitely improving over spring. And we can Excuse see the sorry. hints there of a potential Dark Horse playoffs run. Essentially, and imagine saying that at halfway through spring, zero and nine, and now we look at halfway through summer, halfway through that split. BDS have actually kind of gotten close to that mark than Astralis are at this moment. BDS looking to try and at least gain some confidence. It does feel like that playoffs run is so, so difficult to get to. But Astralis, you know, they did take a couple of hard losses recently as well, potentially an opening. Uh, well, on to those bands, particularly a lot of Flavor of the Month ones. You can see the Yumi and the Poppy, the Seraphine Gwen, all those really strong picks on the current patch taken off the table. It does mean a first pick Zeri, though, for Kobe, this AD carry that we've just been hearing so much about. It's a phenomenal monologue by Goldborg. See yes. whether he can pull a shot, though. Is the curse real? <laughs> Find out after this game, eh? On the other side, uh, we have a pick which was picked up in the last game by BDS. They had the Ophelos. It was an Ophelos Lulu lane which mm -hmm. they had, which was actually a little bit of a different take for BDS. BDS were trying to put a little bit more pressure in the TV2, look for a little more firepower. They were typically going towards stuff like the Ezreal, Misfortune, even a Seraphine game in there alongside their Senna game as well. But having something like the Ophelos, it means that they do want to put more resources down to this bot lane, and that's something which they haven't really done so far. Absolutely. And while Astralis' early game has been a little lackluster, I think it's fair to say, picking up something like the Wukong here, despite some of those nerves, to try and make some of those early aggressive plays and be a team fight engage option definitely plays into how uh, the side of Astralis like to play those mid games. Okay, of course, now, uh, just a reminder, this is patch 12.13. It's on the bottom of the screen. It does mean that a couple of our champions have been hit. Wukong was hit, uh, of course, in the last couple of patches. Still going to be locked in. And with the Gangplank, this is very, very typical for Astralis too. They love to start impacting those team fights. Hit two, three items, turtle up to that point, and then take it to the 5v5s. BDS on the other side, they've typically had a bit more strength in the early game when they have been strong. It's not really been seen for the last couple of weeks, but with something like that Jin Zhao, you can see how potentially Synchro, and if uh, Nuclear Ant has a pick to help him alongside that, maybe they can start getting things going early so Astralis don't get to that strength of the late game team fight. We are kind of waiting to see after this second phase of bands, what support and mid laners are going for, and I'm kind of curious what you'd rather see be the blind pick option here. Hmm, so... Obviously, we've seen a lot of Silas's come out recently. Really? I actually wonder for some, uh, for a team like BDS, whether they would like to 
try their hands at that again. Uh, you can see that Nuclear Rank has actually had two games on it so has far, been. and the whole league has been pulling out this pick. Look at the likes of Certus and SK had a couple of awesome games on, or at least uh, Gen X had a game on it too, but you see other teams pulling it out to great effect. I think that something like a Silas could, again, fit the team composition of BDS to try and stop Astralis from surviving through to that mid game. Silas has the early punch, have a couple of the picks in the uh, pocket too, which can help with that. The BDS have decided to focus down Jong Hu's pool a little bit. Of course, had a pretty phenomenal Braum game yesterday. Nearly pulled out some very clutch defenses against G2 Esports, even if they did lose that one just about in the end. Bit of end. smoke and mirrors happened yeah, in that one. it was indeed. And on the other side, very much focusing towards those roaming uh, mid laners that can attack the side lane. So the Lissandra and the Talia off the table for Nuclear Int. And now to see what BDS will decide to blind pick. Of course. Again, looking for proactivity out of mid lane. I do think that's what BDS would fit their uh, Fit, fit their strengths and potentially stop Astralis from getting towards theirs as well. I'll have to see whether they agree with us, though. Something that they showed a lot through the year. Of course, they uh, do have a couple of picks. The brothers you know barely agree with each other, so I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's ever going to work. It hey, will at be least Nicola the right agrees with me. You know, we've got to have a read on that one. And now, suddenly, you have uh, stolen Cannon Barrage, plundered Cannon Barrage, might I That's say. Let's good. keep it let's yeah, keep I'll, thematic. I'll keep that one. Um, I don't know what we can really call like the stolen Wukong Ultimate, uh, but um, either way. Western instead of Cyclone. Something yeah, like that. Work, yeah. Find another way to talk about spinning whirlwind. <laughs> But either way, uh, again, it really is a strong mid-jungle uh, from BDS, which can help so far. And you know what? Dayor was pretty much the only Vex player in Spring from the LEC that really stuck to their guns, pulling it out again. And that is actually a very good early match with Silas, particularly at level 1. That's one of Vex's power points. Maybe Astralis can stick together in that mid-jungle 2v2, which BDS have uh, thrown them the challenge in. Well, Colby's legendary Zaya won't be, of course, coming through because of the Zeri, but the Rakan is in for jong -hun, so half of that lovers duo locked in for the bot side. Odote thinking about something wild like Azillion, but of course it is a hover. So it's always dangerous to talk about. So we'll see what it actually will be. But then there actually okay. locked oh, in. Right. There you go. So you now have some ability to speed your friends into the fray. I think seeing the Zarya and the Rakan, you look at your fellows, you think, actually, you don't really need support hmm. matchup to help you through the laning phase. I think if it was that point where you're looking at a stronger lane, you have to pick in something like a Lulu. But with that, they say, let's go towards that mid late game. Give us some more ability to mid game skirmish. Indeed. And honestly, after yesterday when it was, let's dive the bot side and make it a bit of a hellscape, having the Zillion help to try and reset some of that might make some sense here. Of course, you know, on the other side for Astralis, they've got a lot of tools to make Kobe and Dayo very dangerous in this game. To, and of course, Kobe already talked about them before. What a carry they have been for this resurgence of Astralis. Hit those two items, hit those two items for everyone on the board. Astralis is going to feel happy about things. And now we've got to wait until we head onto the rift backstage. You can see the Astralis players ready and focused for this game. Concentration. So, Astralis, um, of course, worth setting the stakes for this. Uh, Astralis are coming in as very much the overdogs in this, the favorites, particularly with BDS's recent run of form. They have been very much struggling to pin even together a strong early game, which was their strength. But it is at this point where you are looking at how close the table is. One slip, one mistake, and even a team like BDS can punish you even when they are down on form. If they free, find that today. Might be able to take a win from Astralis, huh? Seen some crazy runs before. Maybe, just maybe, it's a possibility. A very long shot, but still a shot right now. Some very excited crowd members today. I'm enjoying that energy. Um, of course, on the other side, the table right now, it's incredibly tight. You know, the space between being in playoffs, being out of playoffs is a game, two games apart. And you've got to be trying to get these wins against the you know, BDS right now, who are the, the lowest placed team in the league. Astralis can't afford to slip up, as you were saying. No, they can't. But, you know, you take a win today. Yeah. There's a, uh, even that coveted fourth world spot, which potentially might be up for grabs at some point. Good enough win streak from this point. Maybe that's on the table for them. I think I've heard word from production. We might just, just be ready. Has to, to start the, the game. I'm hitting the button. A welcome indeed to our first game here of the LAC on this day two of week six. No, five. I've got the wrong week. Oh, got my numbers are not as strong as for me. <laughs> Never do maths on air. And I've messed it up. Like, what is it? 40 it's seconds it's into game like, one? Yeah. Well, maybe you're trying to uh, escape. So, obviously, last split, yes. well, week five, was the crazy split of spring. Uh, maybe it's just uh, casting fear into the hearts of not just the teams, but the, the, the broadcast as well. So, <laughs> um, as we can see, 
some real level one moves happening, particularly when you have champions like Zillion. And well, I mean, Rakan can do some level one stuff. You're not looking for the same kind of level one invade pressure. The crowd goes well, they remember. Oh, original, original as form. always. Original. Poppy was <laughs> on TSM for once, it's actually relevant. You know, he's moved on from them. It was a bit of a dark uh. days for Kobe, but he's back to Australis, back to a Danish org, and Gulbog has already shown his national pride with that earlier speech, as we said, and head up alongside this this incredible rookie support in Jong Hoon, who was on the Challenger League not so long ago in Korea and was on a 6th to 7th place team, but still considered one of the absolute best prospects in that league. Hell, went with the, with the, the Korean team to the, I think it was the East Asian Championship, hmm. beat the LDL equivalent to, uh, to win that league as well. So the Chinese uh, Academy roster that went over as well. So now over on Astralis, um, who, you know, have been putting up some really good numbers. And, and also, particularly Jong Hoon has been one of the standouts for Astralis. And you know what? While we've got a bit of a slow early game, we'll see what Syncroft does. He has some early options, but... For a rookie to make that kind of impact first couple of games, we saw those Pike highlight reels, right? Um, it means a lot, because it is not easy to be a rookie in the LEC, particularly looking over at BDS. There are a lot of people who came into the league, they have not had an easy time, but this is not the intro which all of these players would have wanted, which Jong Hoon has found himself. And when we were prepping for this game, we were kind of setting this match up to be something about expectations and debut. And for BDS, it was their debut into the league this year. For, for the likes of Astralis, like, You've got, of course, Jong Hoon, who is uh, debuting himself, but likes of Visit Charge, you are re debuting, having retired back in 2019, coming in and having all these statements about, look, the top laners have got so much better, all those niche mm. mechanics have now become commonplace. You don't get to come in and not know all the ins and outs of every matchup to you. It's such a hard yeah. job to come back in. Yeah, baseline is, it's, it's just difficult to play in the LEC as a new player. <laughs> There's so much talent stacked up here to forget about it sometimes. Um, now they get a chance to test their metal once again against each other. Zinkrov, though, has found his way in just behind Dayo, but Xerxes around and maybe turn around. The wind does become lightning and connects with Dayo, but I don't think he'll strike twice and throw in the audacious charge quite yet. Xerxes just trying to fix the wave. Uh, nuclear end out of mana and uh, started with the Doran's Shield, so it doesn't have something like a corrupting potion to keep him topped up on that. And you can already see how important it is for these junglers to be uh, keeping an eye on that mid jungle TVT. That's something that we linked very early in the draft of BDS in terms of this is how they have succeeded in the past. Of course, haven't found as much of that right now, but Astralis, they're ready to respond. Then Graf does secure that bot side. Skull crap, and something I do want to keep an eye on is, of course, BDS's early game. Yes. In the first couple of weeks here of summer, we saw some actually pretty good numbers from them. 100% first blood break, were with a gold lead, getting some kills on the board, and then from those first two weeks, they have fallen off an early game cliff. That is a monstrously negative change around in Fortune. And I, that's a really hmm, awkward thing to see from BDS. I'm trying to think of the right word for it, because honestly, the thing that we could always return to with BDS in spring in those first couple of weeks was Okay, but at least they have early game. They're losing in the mid game, particularly when they have to make the more creative plays when the map is very open. But the early game was solid for them. They could play through, again, Syncroft getting things done early on the map, but they've struggled to find that same kind of footing so far. And you're looking at so many of these teams now, which look at BDS and say, well, what strengths do you have? You need to show us something new now, or at least recover that early game. A little bit of that question about trajectories, about expectations for this team. like. What is the goal for this organization at this point? What is the goal for these players? Because it's been a bit of a, a rough start, a bit of a rough half of the split. We need to start seeing some of that improvement, some of that recovery, uh, just for, like, for the all in general. So part of what will help them is having a bit more competitive lanes. They've had a little bit of a struggle in that. Of course, Australis, they've not necessarily been the uh, laning connoisseurs themselves, but Nuclear Int on a high agency champion who uh, has some support from the jungle, that very much helps. Having this 2v2 down bot side, which you know is going to uh, scale to relevancy too. The fellas to have spike very, very powerful. Speaking about that mid lane, the high, high agency champion from Nuclear Int takes a flash. That's indeed Dayor. That's not what you want to see early on in this mid lane. The Vex getting a little bit bullied there by Nuclear Int, who does land that abduct. Bond and yes, out of mana, but gets that flash and suddenly Synchrov on this Shinzo, this early agency jungler, can maybe finds an angle there. We'll have to see whether the pathing comes back to that point. Of course, we're getting to the point where first Dragon is up if we see bot lane pressure turn into everything. We've seen a lot of bot lane 3v3s yes, in the meta where you've had these very interactive 2v2s, less so in this game, but we've seen it quite a lot with like the junglers pathing down bot and looking for those 3v3s into something like a Dragon Secure. So maybe that would be the option as well. But of course, with that flash missing, it just gives Syncroft a couple of these, uh, these extra options to play towards. 
There's so many stories for Astralis. So many, so many long-standing memories. Like, we heard about Kobe and how, honestly, he's had another really good split. But the question is, is it enough to carry him into playoffs, the first potential playoffs for Astralis if they can make it? So we just hinted at, you know, potential jungler pathing down yes. bot side, head towards that 3v3. It is looking like we've got that, but Deor is here first. Nuclear and stuck under tower. Of course, uh, top lane is not really in a position to impact as much. Of course, you have the cannon barrage. That's the one thing, but it's still pre-14 minutes. You know, I have to always think about that again. I go, oh yeah, you can't actually teleport in anymore. Not yet. Kind of makes things a little awkward, but... Uh, with that in mind, BDS kind of see the vision on Dragon, they go, oh, all right, let's not try our uh, luck too much at that point. And actually, Dale without that flash, yeah, see what he can do. Behind. He has still got hijack available now with the levels. It's can rain. try and punish this Vex without the flash. The bombs are on, Xerxes around. The Nuclear Imp will not pull the trigger quite yet. Okay, and again, actually, big praise to Xerxes. The few times where BDS have looked towards mid, Xerxes on the whole has been there to recover. So Dale just paths towards the Wukong and gets away with a chunk and nothing else blown. Not this time, of course. On vision here is the Zillion. Has to speed his way away from danger. Wow, look at those Korean recall cancelling mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> That's That was what you went for with that? Uh, it's it's what I've got, Sam. Take it or leave it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that one and move on, I think is what I'll actually do. Um, <laughs> and if it, nothing hugely exciting happening thus far early on. It's been a relatively slow-paced early game. Got a hex strike up first, but no one's felt bold enough to start that one up exceptionally early. And about 30 seconds till a Rift Herald spawns, which might be our first real taste of action in this game. Yeah, and part of that lack of action is uh, kind of the nature of what we've seen from actually the bot lane matchup. Normally you think, okay, the mid-jungle, that's really where things are going to start flying off. But it's a little bit different when you don't have something like a Nautilus in the game, which can very easily roam. Of course, Rakan kind of can, but when you're playing defensively in mid lane because the Silas has kind of got a leg up on uh, the Vex, even your account can't do that much. So both supports kind of lacking a few of their options. And with that, neither team really wants to over force. Matty though. Have you just cast a curse this one? Not quite. Matty quite. thought about an angle, but now Kobe's gonna throw down the lightning crash. But he's gonna get out of the ground. Edward Canterbury afterwards though. Might turn this one around, but a flash away will keep him alive. Keep your eyes oh, on Deo and Xerxes, though. Yeah, they got the mid-prior again. Silence cannot respond. Aggressivo cannot respond. That means that, though, there are no kills. Astralis Go force hunting. off the tower. Dux has got a warrior. Trickster and a Cyclone. Inclement weather incoming. But what category is it? Just a category three for now. And no one is washed away. It's category zero kills. Can't see anything more off of that. Nuclear Ant has finally found their way to the party. You don't have any tools now. What can Wind we do, Astralis? comes lightning and the weather turns around. First blood to Nuclear Ant Silence. Gonna keep looking for something. When's that next extend abduct up? Not gonna be up in time to follow that on. So Nuclear in a little late to the party. Astralis, I think they kind of bait themselves into a bit of a false sense of security. Just because you have that mid prior doesn't mean the play is going to happen in a time scale which ends before the Silas gets there. They miss time it a little bit. What were we saying about the jungle having some ability to fight early? BDS kind of find it just about. Nuclear in with a kill on the board. It's good news for BDS. And when we thought about BDS success, success has often been through this mid jungle. And the jungle is here at least to try and punish Astralis. Goes in with the wind, becomes lightning. And the audacious charge gets a flash. And a oh. copy for the Crescent Guard. Can't quite secure the kill though after a fantastic round edge. Oh. Flash will not make him escape. The Chakram secure the life of the Rakan, but at least the AD carry survives for now. Oh, gosh. So now, BDS, what were we talking about for them? Their early game started to fall apart. We haven't seen it for a number of weeks at this point. They're starting to show, again, some of those echoes of how they found success in spring within the earlier weeks of the split two, at least within the parts of the game, which looked okay for them. This is kind of what we were saying just at the end of that play. Astralis think they have the timing for it, but they can't finish the play in time. Then they're caught out, the overstay is punished, and BDS pick up the kills. Dead to right, two kills on the board. And we've had questions about Astralis' early game as well, let yes. us not forget. Yes, they've been able to come back in some fairly crazy games over the last few weeks, but this is not what they wanted to see if they want to be pushing for those playoff spots. Yeah, so just to again put things in context in that sense, Astralis have had some awkward early games, but typically they have drafted towards 5v5 team fights. They have that again this game. If they get towards multiple items, it is going to be very difficult for BDS to uh, fight 5v5 on even footing. It's why it's important they're getting these kills early on. It potentially can even those scales and take the strength away from Astralis, who have been very comfortable going late game and grouping up. A little bit of trading there from Matty and Kobe, who were trying to secure control of the lane while Syncroft was soloing out the strike on the other side of the map. You can see Xerxes 
gets a hold of that Herald, and that'll be objective traded across the map. You know what? Actually, speaking about um, putting pressure towards bot lane for BDS, chatted about that in terms of the draft. It's Nefelius locked in again. It's not something like uh, the Zeri themselves or another one of these kind of champions which survive a little bit in isolation. This is something that BDS tried to default to a little bit later into the split, put resources bot side. They're actually potentially doing it again. Great vision toggle by the observers. Thank you very much for highlighting the state that Astralis' bot lane it is. Jungle and Kobe have to play so respectfully. Jungle is dark and full of BDS members. <laughs> they always hanging around, but was uh, not required to invest the ultimate or the teleport this time. Three plates, though, uh, is Matty's prize for this lane pressure. And yes, there's a Herald and Inventory on the other side, but they need to make good use of it. Maybe they can do that right now as Stralis are looking to maybe collapse on the bot side. A BDS oh, horde on an open field. They'd love to fight it. <laughs> yeah, was, I noticed that. That was a reference. good reference. Yeah, well done. Well done. Uh, <laughs> we do those occasionally. Uh, occasionally? Like, I swear it's, most of our casting is reference-based. A little bit. Um, see how many more we can slip in there. Uh, let us know what you realize. Sometimes I don't either. I do recognize that Senkroff is once again bot lane. And again, this is BDS. Oh, Kobe. resources bot side. Kobe doesn't have a flash and doesn't have... Got a safety. He's going to throw down the lightning crash. Xerxes is coming around. Won't lead to any more action. Just the ultimate being uh, used there by the Astralis bot lane. Now, it doesn't have a flash, but of course, uh, Zeri, when you stood next to a wall, effectively has like a triple range one. You just hop over into safety, does blow that ultimate. And again, you can see that BDS are really trying oh, to Matty. shut this Zeri out of the game. Oh, Matty. Oh dear, he is dead, deceased, pushing up the daisies. Got to meet his maker, he is an ex. Matty is uh, pining for the fountains. <laughs> um, he is, and this is so sad for BDS because this has again been a little bit of the story for them where they've tried to piece together some of these okay early and mid games. I'm thinking of that one game they had, which went very late game where they had that cog mob in. I can't remember the exact game for it, but it's just a couple of key positioning reset errors which can catch them out. And the hard work of BDS put towards that bot side actually gets very difficult for them to capitalize on them Boom. now. And suddenly, Astralis, huge power play. Shut down the AD carry, get more safety to your own bot lane. Herald goes over, and that early game, you work very hard to try and dis uh, you know make the bot lane uneven. It's fallen away from you. We're all sharing there, and the joy of the crowd enjoying some demolition of structures. They do love a Shelly charge or two here in the Berlin studio. Season 12 champion, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But of course, that is why Cobb has been able to survive so much on this bot side. You know, you do look at that and you just think, yeah, he's just playing very respectfully. And while they're doing that, has managed to keep in the game. And I think this goes very well to show, again, uh, we talked about how BDS, we talked about a lot of the BDS side. Let's go swift, switch that over to Astralis very briefly. Um, because what Astralis have typically been very good at is turtling up and say, you know what, we will get to these late game team fights. That's been how a lot of their victories have come. They will get to the point where this multi-item spike comes through for their team. Despite the amount of pressure that was put towards this bot lane, Astralis have come out with a very respectable amount of gold onto their AD carry. Yes, they're gonna end up losing this tab. They took one beforehand, that's fine. It's trading even, and Astralis happy with their position in the game. They've shown, it, they've shown this to us before. Another cheer goes out as another turret falls. Now one to one in that score for both teams. And you're right. You know, like Astralis have made themselves. Uh, I'm a sometimes renowned... right. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yes. Yeah. I, I didn't want to give you too much to go. Good. Try to be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Stay. Clearly, is your older brother. Um, but yes, Astralis have kind of made themselves somewhat renowned here in the LEC for, for being pretty capable of team fighting their way out of scenarios they put themselves into in the early game. And part of that is what they grab for, of course, but part so, of it is veteran C I have the ability um, to look at the map. I've come to a revelation. Have you? I actually think Aphelios is hiding something. I think he's hiding the fact that he's actually a bug. Karzix is not the bug champion in League of Legends. Because, Where um, are you going with this? So, you know how bugs are sometimes colored in bright colors to say, don't eat me, I'm poisonous. Uh -huh. Look at those colors on the weapons he's got. Oh, I actually boo -boo. think Aphelios is actually the, the bug champion of League of Legends. You see that red, white, and you're like, ah, Is it like a chameleon poison. bug? Like, changes weapons in, like, uh, dangerousness look, depending on I didn't on think that much. Weapons. I'm thinking about bot lane fights. That potentially might happen. Zexy, in the spot of bother, but does sidestep the wind becomes see, lightning. You see, the, the Aphelios wasn't there. There was none of this language to say, don't fight. Um, Anyway, that was just a little thing which I was thinking of just off this whole So, history. Aphelios is an insect. Yes. You can determine his danger by the colors he's sporting. But there you go. David Attenborough here on the caster desk, apparently. Synchrov fighting for vision control, but Jong is going to pop the quickness. Oh, okay. Flash engage doesn't quite land it. Hanabrad comes afterwards. In they come with the Vex Press! But that looks like a zillion ults keep Matty alive. Ults popped across the board. Ultra shot the laser. 
just about avoids taking Matty's life. Oh gosh, but the big thing here is that they don't pop the Zillion ult. Matty has to stay on low HP. It's 10 seconds until the Dragon. Astralis were fishing for the play. They find a play which gives them the numbers advantage. Chachi has to blow the ultimate, but still has that TP. Astralis, happy for the next couple of seconds about how this is going to go. Problem is they are down three critical ultimates, and that could be punishing. Jonghoon will get the knockup and dance his way out of danger. And Kratiba with Meganar pops in, gets Jonghoon's stop watching, missed Times and Bar into the wall. He's over the wall. Jong Hoon being chased down though with your Deutsch's charge. What can Dayon do afterwards though? Gets the fear. But I don't think it'll be quite enough. The personal space not going to keep them alive. Xerxes clone is jumped off, but not the monkey himself. Gets a cyclone off and now nuclear in with the stolen cannon barrage. Plundered rather. Managed to get his way out of danger. And only one dies despite. A lot of chaos. And Chong him goes down, but look at the amount of time he buys. It's not a clean pick from BDS. He makes them really work for it. But what happens with that is it gives Astralis another chance to contest this. This could have been a blowout fight. It's now back to even. Dale's got the ult. Ready for That's round it. two. They are going to land another Theum. Zipcon good. The oh. dragon. Mike and Matty spinning around with the Inferno, trying to get as much damage down as he can. But they'll get the dragon, they'll yeah. get out, no one else dies. And of course, Dale didn't actually have the ult. Just the passive charge up, looking for something on the side, but BDS. It's hard for, it's not exactly clean, but it does get them the two early dragons. Now they are still behind a little bit in gold, and Maddie might be in danger. Let's have the flash, we'll probably have to use it. John Hoon's got quickness back up again, but this time has cleanse, and the barrel crits Matty down to about a third, but nothing more. Now Chachi in danger, flashed oh. away with an abscond, an abduct, and a dead pirate. BDS willing to throw some punches. Oh, oh, oh my <laughs> day, nuclear end. About a pixel, a team oh. away from connecting on the Rakan 12. I mean, the pirate goes down, but apparently it's Captain Jack Sparrow in the support role. Jonghoon making it, again, difficult to pick off this Rakan, using the mobility to the lengths that they can. So, BDS, what have they won from this? Two early dragons, they're going to get themselves potentially a herald off of this too. Doesn't look like there's much left to contest. And now, BDS, they actually find themselves, again, tenuously back in the lead with those uh, objectives stacking up their way. It adds a little bit onto the game, which hasn't been shown in the goal. Maybe, and we'll... I'll get to play with some of these... Uh, the button buttons, button. indeed. And you can see that's where the gold is right now. Bit of a lead, of course, over actually, to the mid lane. Actually, we'll go to this replay. replay. It actually, is. Yes. I can't do that now. So we're going to um, see Matty get jumped on, but does manage to get out yeah. with the cleanse. And I, I think what's really good from Astralis here is what they're doing is they see a fellow on the map and they go, we don't really want you to have farm where we can. So let's just try and stop him from getting that. Again, it's just overestimating their ability. We saw this in the bot lane in that first dive, but they were kind of like, oh yeah, this feels like the right time to make a play. And it kind of was, but the execution's not quite there, the timing's not quite there, and BDS managed to punish. And that's something which BDS haven't managed to do for quite a while now. Again, signs of life in BDS. This is a better showing from them than they've had uh, for a little while in this split. Try it again, perhaps, with a different button wrong. this time. That's the total gold right now. Quite it's clever. Chachi printing money, but Nuclear Int just behind. Still a pretty close game, though. Stardust lead just into the into the advantage now with that and, additional tower tech. And that's actually quite a dangerous look for BDS because Kobe has gold. Oh, yes. When you see this area, you can see those components in inventory. This area is going to stop popping heads at some point on BDS. They will not be easy to close down. I look at the tools that BDS have, and I'm looking at the NAR potential on a flank. Maybe the Jinzo have to manage to attack something, but it's all a little difficult to land, but you do have a lot of people playing blocker with gangplank barrels, with Rakan playing interference. Reaching Kobe is going to be a problem, and they need to if Kobe has gold, which of course he does. Can they close down the Zeri? An age old question, it feels like, at this point, since that champion's been released. Since the there. dawn of time, which happened like six, six months, months ago. ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Time is, time is like, I don't know, what's the word again? Like, not irrelevant, it's the wrong word. Uh, uh, Flexible. Like human, a human, human construct. <laughs> there we go. Thanks They're for rescuing me there. On physics. I can talk to you about the James Webb's telescope. That's a fun one. Very exciting. Um, Very off topic. Look, look to the stars. That's Astralis's brand, right? Um, that, do that. See, I that was that. impressive to yeah. bring that back to being relevant to the game. I, I applaud that. Well, bring it back to what's happening on the screen. See that uh, both these teams now at the point where side trying to move between side lanes is becoming more of an issue. Really look towards the lane allocations which BDS are looking for, because I'm looking at Nuclear Rent, I'm saying, okay, going up into that Gangplank lane. Does that give you the ability to push in that Gangplank in a way that Aggressive can't really currently? It feels like uh, they're trying to get that Nara a little bit away from Vizichart. She's Gangplank, and he has been a long-term player of that champion. He was, of course, around when it was first remade back in Season 5 Summer. Um, 
let's get some numbers to that because he has been around an awful long oh, yes. time. Came in in Season 5 Spring, made it to the finals at UOL, at UOL and has been a mainstay of the league. He's returned back to the fray. Yeah, exactly. Your well in 2014 was when he was making his debut on that team. Such a, a series, long yeah. time. Kind of left in 2019, come back in, in, the, in the summer of 2022. Hell, before he was in League of Legends, he was the faker, the goat of another eSport that was entirely different. He was an Age of Mythology, Mythology player yeah. under the name of Magia. That, that is a blast from my childhood, but uh, see if you can tra channel into Divinity in this one. Absolutely, looking a little bit dangerous over for Synchrov. Judge trying to vibe with the Crescent Guard, but not for there much longer. Go. Kobe with even more gold to his name. Uh, and that's starting to look again more and more dangerous. Astralis, they're getting to the point where they can group up, and that is where their strengths have been in summer. BDS, we talked a little bit earlier about how they can uh, get a little bit lost when they have to make the decisions on the open map around mid game. Typically, it was their early game, which uh, was their strength. And they found some of that this game, but once again, looking a little bit lost on the map. Syncroft not really close enough to his friends. And now looking at Astralis with position on the next dragon. It is spawning in BDS again. The hard work that they had on the Stanley's objectives is starting to get a little bit dangerous. Mirin tries to steal away the Shadow Surge. Will not quite land it this time. And now Deyo is still potentially in danger. Missed another Scald Abductor. Now maybe Nuclear Rent is in danger in spray. Try to turn The stopwatch to prevent the engage with the Mistral Bolt. <laughs> close friends stuff. We have seen a couple of side lane 1v1s coming out in the last couple of days. Drops some. Some of you will remember what happened with Nuke Duck yesterday, pulling out the uh, that Talir. Oh yes. He had a heck of a good time on that one, and Nuclear Rent on Silas in this game, side laning, taking it today off. Both of them looking to put up a fight. Definitely trying to put on an exhibition. Of course, Silas increasingly popular around the world, becoming more blind pickable. So many amazing ults to steal, and not as many counters as before. You can sort of see why it's coming back oh, to priority. Maddie kind of left alone a little bit of mid laning. Yeah. I was just wondering what was going to happen there, but of course, uh, Cersei was a little far away to lead the charge on that one. Seriously looking to see what's happening with this mid. Oh, oh the, the barrel from Chatty! Oh. That's some veterancy! Not going to matter too much right now. They're going to try and survive anyway. And Jong Hoon goes in, kills off Synchrom, and the fight continues. Maganar is going to be around as well, but who even cares as everyone melts and is trialed by mid game team fights. And it's a complete ace aside from Manny. They find the way to group, they come to the mid lane. You see that Aphelios farming again, and they say, you know what, let's not have any of that. They collapse him from the side lanes, get the kills gonna get themselves the Baron off of that a beautiful, disgusting set of barrels of Chachi. This is just, this is just not fair. That is absurd. Double crit. Maddie completely out of that fight. And the Abelos who you're waiting to come online on the side of BDS is just a non-factor. Doesn't matter. Look at the engage afterwards. Vex, press straight to the backside and everyone melts. And how satisfying is it to see this Astralis roster which was so down and out in spring. Make a couple of changes coming into summer. Some old faces coming back with a fresh lick of plane. And we just talked about Chachi Xerxes alongside them too, coming back from NA. What a disgusting team fight. That was pretty brutal. It was. Lots of wombo combo going through in BDS's Wait. early game. Hang on, Jogu, buddy, did you just spellbook smite the cannon away from your AD carry? <laughs> Korean mechanics, baby. <laughs> Oh, a uh, bit that's that support tax right there. <sighs> Not even going to save it for an objective. Just decides he needs to switch it out. He's got the ignite in place. It was it was a, a sacrifice for the better summoner spell, the greater good. Honey, it's cannon minion wave time. You know what's happening. <laughs> Baron in inventory now as a result of that fantastic team fight in mid lane. Astralis beginning to earn themselves a much more significant gold lead than we've seen through yeah. the rest of this game. And of course, Astralis have been very good about these mid game turnarounds. And now they're in a position where BDS must find a comeback, something they've struggled to do all season long. And it's something which Astralis have often put to bed as well when they get those strong 5v5s. All that right from the start. It's their identity, it's what they've drafted. You get gold onto the right people and it gets very difficult for BDS to really shut them down. You now have all those items onto your scaling laners, onto your scaling AD carry and BDS. Don't have easy ways to pick off Astralis around the fringes. They're pretty much always going to be sad in the group now, besides one person sat on a side lane probably, and it's going to be difficult to shut down. 6,000 gold now, the lead. They've stopped the dragon stacking to boot. And yes, this Aphelios is at two items. How you got two items across the board, but on the other side, you're looking closer and closer to three items. Just got... 
Just to quickly cut in, actually, because I absolutely love this ward here. That ward there is actually really, really cool. You can see actually a couple of them littered through the jungle, but the main thing is, like, you look at the you look at the minimap and there is zero vision. Do you see a ward hit? No, I don't. Do you see a ward hit? No, I don't either. BDS are working with no information, whereas Australians have wards everywhere, and it's allowing them to fearlessly push up. They know they don't even have any wards behind them right now to get teleport flanked on. They have wards in the middle of the lane to scout out whether Matty is farming, they know where the Aphelios is, they know where everything they need to to secure the map in the way they want to. Astralis, when they're ahead of the game currently, have found very good ways to group and close out, and their vision control is part of it. Perksy lurking on the flank here, looking to pull forth another Cyclone. Won't be required to quite yet. Playing it slow and steady, controlled with all that vision control we've been talking about. And the problem is, if BDS go to fight that, there are so many dive tools. How they could go from Olympic gold with the amount of dive tools on the side of Astralis. Oh no, wouldn't you have to pick a pike for that? Isn't that a diving move? Double pike with a twist. That was... I was expecting you to talk about the deep water dive on the W, but no, no. you guys went through the name. <laughs> that, was, that was good, I grant you, but oh, uh, unexpected. For someone who knows basically nothing about diving, I'm glad I had that one stuck up. Vague memories. Um, back to what's happening on the rift though. Astralis have now managed to reset, get themselves a whole lot of gold, and I'm looking at BDS trying to push out side lanes, which might help Ooh. them retain some of that vision control, but they need to really start finding ways to play around these vision oh traps. Dear. Because again, the vision control of Astralis allow them to make Double plays like this. Double TP and Matty is sandwiched between a rock and a Vex place. Nowhere to go and miss oh, from oh, oh, a barrel. Sticks him in the dirt, two foot wide, six foot deep. He stuck him into the barrel and chucked him overboard. That's not a barrel, it's a coffin. <laughs> Held the lead, chuck it overboard. Now you've lost your AD carry again. BDS have really struggled this game to protect Matty when they're farming. Yeah, they're going to get a dragon out of this, but your AD carry's off the board once more. You're going to have your lane shoved into your base yet again. This is a consolation prize, and yes, they get to soul point, but do they even survive another five minutes to see the light of that soul? And you can see the chain of events there, the dominoes that fell, the butterfly flapping its wing, whatever analogy you'd like to use. The vision control led to wars behind Matty, which led to him getting TP'd on, leading to his death. And a very sad BDS who, as you said earlier in the game, are struggling with being lost on the map in mid-game. Now this mid lane inhibitor under siege. And Sinkov is doing his absolute best to clear out the wave. There's just nothing to Cersei. do. Cersei goes in. Cannon barrage afterwards. Astralis looking for some more. The turnaround damage with the uh, Moonlight Vigil powered up by an Infernum. Doing what it can to ward them off. They'll keep the inhibitor alive at least. Yeah, sadly, this first ain't venomous enough, ain't poison enough to and stop Astralis from going fight. Oh, they are the flash! Personal space looking to invade BDSs. Not quite enough nuclear in on the side, though. Had to go golden, trying to stay alive, but it's just a monument to hit Stins. That statue breaking down very quickly, but does survive the try, the attempted turnaround ah. by Astralis. Would have reached the back line, but a monkey beat him over the fence. Cersei getting in towards that back line, and yeah, it didn't quite find the engage they wanted to around that inhibitor turret, but was enough just again to break that base. They do it with, uh, without the Baron as well. That's spawning in a minute. See what happens to this continued vision control. That's the next thing which I'm looking for, right? We've seen BDS effectively find, run out of ways to find ways onto the flank. They have really struggled to get this Silas, this Gnar, into the back line through a way which isn't just running straight at them. Yeah, the Zillion can help, but it's just not been enough. And Astralis, if they keep up this vision control, it should be an easy put to bed game. 30 seconds till Baron, and we can sort of see exactly oh how much work Chachi's been doing in the top lane. So, for Ow. those of you that don't realize, that's actually just three barrels. Yeah, that's how much damage they do. That is three yeah, Matty yeah, health yeah. bars. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe back in like season six or seven, when you could build Sunfire Ice Ball oh, and everything. Oh, good lord, yes. Yeah. So, probably more like 10, let's oh, be real. Gosh, I can't imagine what a fellow would have been like back in like season seven with that kind of season six, seven. Oh, I, I, that would be despaspicable. Oh. I mean, why, think of, why did you let me we, think? We, we, we have got Sunfire Nash's build, so it's semi back. <laughs> uh, of course, getting removed very quickly from the back nodes. Please, Haunted by season please six never and its build AP Felios. That is oh, not so much I can support. Uh, Just in a dark and full door. of Jong Hoon this time around. Not quite like the early game of teleport coming from Nuclear Int. But it's just to try and support his team this time around. Just a chunked out jungler. Not going to get too much more out of it this time around. Nice attempt from Astralis though to punish. But it, it's just it's just tools away from the EDS for pretty much free. And now Maddie walking up. Someone has to walk up. At least they still have the Zillion ult. That allows the first person into the fray to at least have the ability to start off the fight. And as you're actually just pointing out on our screens, actually, there is now two wards of the river for BDS. Yay! Yay! Woo! There's your control. Thank you, Bobo.
Nice. They understand the power of wards. It's Jong Hoon is going to be on one and now has to hop his way over the wall. They're going to throw down a cannon barrage to try and keep this mid lane turret alive. Aggressivo will stay for the final auto and secures it. And that is a big win for BDS, or at least a win. First they've had in a while. Yeah. Well, getting rid of that middle uh, out of turret, it definitely helps to a large degree, but I think actually you're far enough behind now that if anyone from Astralis is in mid lane, you're still probably losing that push, which is means again, it's like, if this had happened 10 minutes earlier, you'd be okay with it. Now it's happening, now it is again, just a constellation prize. Zersi, he's alone, but he feels empowered to go do this. He's on three items, the Black Leader and that, um, the Space Marine Sword, he's got the Chain Sword. Uh, he got a lot of gold value in those three items. Very tanky, lots of utility on this, uh, this Wukong. Very it just allows him between the team. It's in Adept Adept to Startus. Adeptus Astralis. I can get behind Astralis. that. If you ever want to open a new chapter, uh, let me know. Um, <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. And Cersei, so much tanky stats on him. Again, just allows him to act on his own, which is very important. Well, he's on vision. vision. Which is the war for vision might them. just have been one hit by BDS. They're going to land the Binding Eclipse courtesy of that Graviton gun. But he's going to get out of danger now. Aggressive being punished on the other side. It was all of eight. All the ruse. And the Nar is down. Chachi on a killing screen. And the inhibitor turret soon to fall out. And the Astral is taking a couple of notes maybe from their previous game. Got a side lane to death versus G2. And Astralis pick up a couple of tricks, send a couple of people hidden down to that bot lane, and they break the base without even having to go towards that Baron. They don't go for the flip, they take two inhibitors, and they're out clean. All eyes on Baron, man, they weren't paying attention to the bot side. They slip in, they murder the Nar, and they get two inhibitors to boot. Smooth place for Stralis, and oh, smooth oh. turnaround! Synchron left out to dry, nothing to be done, as Visit Chachi starts landing nuclear warheads instead of barrels. That will be game, there is nothing more to be done. Only Odote survives the battle. It is almost a clean ace. Only Odote survives the oncoming Exterminatus from Astralis, but this game is effectively done. Teleport's calling in, dropping from orbit. Astralis looking to go five and six. BDS competed in the early game, but the mid game collapse seemingly foretold. And Astralis will clean up this game in smooth, swift, Fashion. Receiver, one last charge. A brave, valiant attempt, but it is just a firing of the 21. Boulder salute for the Nar to celebrate and mourn the passing of his team. Astralis with the victory. And you know what? That's about as typical as it does get from Astralis. Uh, they had that again. Maybe a couple of shakes in the early game, but really do want to credit them while sitting there and actually defending the early mid-jungle aggression. Cersei was there on time. Kobe and Jong Hoon in that bot side, though they had a lot of resources thrown at them, also played out the game very safely. They turtled up to a point until they saw that opening, and yet there were a couple of overstayed plays of their own right when they tried to be aggressive, but they got to that point of power and they played through it a way which they've done for the majority of this split. And let's be real, welcome back. Nice to see you all again. <laughs> Looking very, faces. very beautiful all today, Berlin. And, uh, and there's also Seth. Thank yeah. you. Wow. That, that. That's why we got the mask for you. Yep. You're just getting worse. This is what it means to be casting with younger, by the way. Um, but, of course, got to credit up, as you said, BDS, they tried in that game, which was enough, and Astralis's mid-game power. Just too much. There they are. Coming out from behind stage. Here to take a bow after their smooth from the mid-game. Yeah. It's, again, great to see this team recover from spring with a mix of that veterancy and new blood. And yeah, now they're seeing the rewards of it. A very cohesive team with a strong identity around those team fights. Doing very well for themselves. A little disappointed for the crowd to see the winners disappear so swiftly, but alas, time to move on instead to the key player of the game on LEC at Twitter. Or at LEC on Twitter, let me get that right the way around. Visit Chachi, Xerxy, or Kobe. Oh, can I vote specifically for Visit Chachi's barrels? Like, just like the just barrel the itself? Barrel. I yeah, have I no like idea. Ask Twitter, I guess. We'll go find out there. <laughs> Throw those votes in and we'll find out how that goes. But this does actually, now moving forwards, mean a big deal for their potential playoff dreams. A reminder, everybody, Astralis is an organization since they've entered the league, have never made playoffs. Mm. And, and now you are looking at this team, which was kind of one win behind the pack of Fnatic 5 and 5. G2 alongside that, Misfits and Vitality, there's four teams tied up at that. And it just, again, just keeps the pressure on. Now, as we were talking about in this game, if somehow Astralis had slipped up, yeah, that's actually a pretty bad loss to have. You know, suddenly you're getting to the point where these victories mean an awful lot. Kaiser was talking about uh, the meaning of how close it was um, in the LEC and what it means for the whole league. But these mid-table teams, now seeing that fourth world spot, now seeing that it is very close to those playoffs, a team like Astralis, 
should stop gaining momentum and should really be perking those ears up now. Absolutely, and we're just buying time here before we get an interview, which has been confirmed to be Xerxes as well after a very strong Wukong game. So just waiting for that to be all set up and just give us a little bit more time to ruminate on the results of that game and look forward to the rest of the day. Yeah, and you know, Xerxes, um, I obviously we're going to go speak to them now. You know, this guy has been such a good facilitator for his team. And again, really want to shout out what happened in those first couple of minutes in that mid jungle where we're saying, oh, yeah, you know, BDS going back towards that mid jungle, really looking to ways to upset uh, what what Dale can do on that Vex. And Xerxes was just there. And suddenly those teeth that the Silas and the Genzo had were pretty blunted. And a lot of that was just Xerxes being there at the right place at the right time, not to mention his team fight impact later. Yeah. And for all the early plays, didn't work out as well as they would have liked for Astralis. I am really pleased to see that they did try to make those early plays work, especially because we have been criticizing the early game. We're starting to see at least some work towards making that stronger, and we'll see how it goes from there. Yeah. So now, obviously, we have to see what goes on ahead from Astralis keeping pace with the rest of the pack and seeing what they can do. But that's enough from us for now. Machine is standing by for Xerxes for that winner's interview. So give them a cheer, Berlin. We'll throw it over to the boys. Ooh, the energy is high today in Berlin. I'm sure Xerxes high off of a must win. That was a must win game for you guys. Did you have that conversation? Did you make it clear like, you know, if we want to continue for this playoff journey, you know, never before done by Astralis, you've got a roster that a lot of people are saying has that uh, within you. Did you have that conversation? Get yourselves ready to play your best today? Um, after yesterday's game, we kind of just like took a, a step back. Yeah. Because I feel like yesterday we were like in a really favorable position to win the game, right? Right. Uh, so like we, we, we feel like maybe we are doing too much and we're like really overcomplicating. Overthinking a bit? Yeah, we're like really overthinking, overcomplicating a lot of uh, things that, you know, if we just, just go with the flow, it's going to be way easier. And uh, we tried to do that today. It was a bit more difficult because we were playing from the backstage and it's a different feel to play from the stage in front of the crowd, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, he's playing the crowd as well, a of bit course. of a charmer. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was very hard to play from the, to not play in front of the crowd, but you know, a win is a win. A win is a win, an important one as well. I, I wouldn't mind talking a little bit about that game yesterday. You guys, you know, you've discussed it. If you don't mind, you know, uh, what do you think went wrong with it? Because a lot of people thought this was it. This was Astralis, you know, about to take a huge leap and take a big scalp. Well, I even I think all of us in game, we, we feel like, you know, this is our game, you know, we're about to be right. too. Uh, so may maybe it just felt too... It was that. It was that conversation, that maybe yeah. unspoken idea of we can, we're doing it, we're doing yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it felt like, we, you know, we are so close, but like, we started like, just complicating things for no reason. Right. Uh, and yeah, we kind of just... Was, was it hesitation as well? Do you think when you get oh, to that sure. point, you kind of, you have an idea, but then you go, but that might be, that, that, that might ruin is, it. Like, we, we, we got a bit hyped, right? Because like, we were like really close to winning, so like everyone tried to chime in yeah. and be like, you know, how, how do I win the game for, for my team? And maybe we had too many voices uh, at the same time. Yeah, I guess that's difficult when you kind of, you, you know, you all have to be following, you know, singing from the same hymn sheet. Mm -hmm. But then you all want to win as bad and you all have ideas for the songs to sing. And so you kind of get a bit, yeah. you know, wires crossed. Yeah, I mean, the, the good thing is that the, the league right now is like very close. Super. Uh, like I looked at the standing and uh, we are like one win compared to like being top three, top four, right? Right. Uh, so in a way, that's good. You know, like it, it was a really big loss for you know, for our playoffs run, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but we are still like in, in competition. A you know? And I'd had a quick look at next week, uh, as I'm sure you might have as well, SK and Rogue. Uh, I mean, how does that land on your eardrums when I tell you SK and top of the table, the untouchable eight win streak Rogue? Well, it's definitely gonna be a good test for us to see how we're gonna do, how we're doing against the best team in LEC right now, mm. right? Uh, but I'm sure that if we kind of like have a conversation over what happened this weekend, uh, I feel, I feel like we're gonna surprise. It's doable. Them. Yeah. It's doable. Reach for the stars, to the stars, all of that Astralis mumbo jumbo. Xerxes in the building, give it up. <laughs> He missed you. He missed you today. And uh, I say thank you, bro. Uh, look, looking forward to seeing you guys thank do you your much. damage to next week. Cheers. Xerxes. We're gonna go to a quick break when we do come back. More League of Even the biggest champ needs a break. And some Kit Kat for you, and some Kit Kat for Elder, and some... No Kit Kat for Barrett. 